Welcome to Bike Life Radio from KWNK 97.7 FM from the Reno Bike Project, NevadaBike.org and BikeWashoe.org. We ride our bikes out into the world with a recorder and talk to people about their bikes and their lives. I'm Kai Plaskon. Right on. You're listening to KWNK 97.7 FM, Bike Life Radio. We're at the Hub Coffee Roasters. Uh, They've also got a bike shop, too, Uh, the Dropout. And uh, Steve Schroeder's here from uh, from Food Truck Friday, uh, Reno Street Food. Uh, Thanks for being here. Hey, thanks for having me, Kai. Always love talking with you. Excellent. Yeah, we we talk here and there as you're rushing around during Food Truck Friday, and we're doing that more now because you've got a bike valet at Food Truck Friday, which means that people can park like a mile away or a half a mile away and ride in, and then we're going to protect the bike for free uh, as a result of you paying uh, the Truckee Meadows Bicycle Alliance to do this this bike valet. Uh, Tell us a little bit about uh, just Food Truck Friday in general. Hey, yeah. Food Truck Friday was born from the idea of uh, 13 years ago. Wanted something here in Reno for locals, wanted something for families, a good family event, and wanted something for food. You know, we get together as family and friends. What do we do? We eat. (laughs) We break bread. I mean, think of a family function where you didn't eat. Yeah. That was a weird function. (laughs) So, uh, (laughs) Grandma, what's going on? So, uh, uh, food Truck Friday, and the third one was to build the food truck industry. When I started, we didn't have food trucks in Reno, and now we have 150, 200 of them that are said. Um, they feel confidence in the marketplace, so they want to come out and have a food truck. Their dream of whatever food they're serving, and it's just been an awesome thing to be a part of and, and grow. And you know, We're now one of the top five largest weekly food truck events in the nation, and we're right here in Reno. Uh, we put out about 40 to 50 food trucks every Friday night during the summer, every Friday, June through August. And, uh, you know, we see thousands of people come out and, you know, the, the success for me is when I get to see those large groups set up their camp. There's 20 people sitting around and they're just laughing and having a great time and eating food and being with family and friends and, um, and watching the food trucks succeed because, um, you know, Reno's a tough market. Food truck can only operate between April and October. Uh, they just don't do well during the wintertime in our particular altitude environment and, and weather. So uh, it's a great opportunity for them to succeed. And, and we've just achieved all of those things. And it's just I'm so proud to be a part of something so great for our community. Yeah. So did you see uh, people riding to Food Truck Friday and then think that uh, what, what made you want to start a bike ballet? <laughs> so we were really small years ago. And yes, people would ride their bikes to the park. And there's you a say small. How small? Like one food truck or a half okay. a food truck or what? Six food trucks. All right. <laughs> and, and you've been out there now, yeah. so uh, when you think six, huge. like, what is that? What, that's, what a waste. Yeah. Um, people would ride their bikes down at a wild park, and there's a fence around the area with the train. So they would either lock up their bikes on the fence or, uh, and this is, you know, bike owner behavior, or they would have come in groups, and then somebody would sit with the bikes and watch them while they would eat, or they'd lock them up to a tree. And there's, there's you know, there's a lot of trees there, but every tree would have a bike. Um, and I own bikes, so I'm like, I totally get it. What's happening here? What if there was a place that, you know, we could do this? Attended other events. Um, I was in another community. A huge event took place, and they had at each, they closed the street in each intersection. They had this free bike valet, and I thought, wow, what a great idea. Somebody watches the bike. How do I do that? So I came back to Reno the next year. Okay, uh, let's do a bike valet, set up some little barrier area, and try to find uh, volunteers to do it. And um, it was not a success. It was intermittent. And now I've got a problem with the concess- customer we're promoting. We have a bike valley. We'll watch your bike instead of having to worry about all those things. Um, and we couldn't, in- we couldn't provide it consistently. So it was going against us. And then the next year was, okay, well, I built these metal bars to the ferro. I went over to him and said, hey, I need you guys to make this creation in my mind. I drew these sketches. And if you know me, I would have been a great doctor because I can't even read my own writing. So... Uh, I built these sketches of what I wanted to have bikes because I saw them in another community and uh, we built them and brought them out and again we couldn't provide a consistent service. Uh, I knew it was a huge and in last year, two years ago, we, we didn't even have a bike valet. So we reached out to the community, you know, small clubs and you know gymnastics and, and uh, travel clubs and softball, baseball, uh, cheerleading. All of them need to do fundraising to get their kids in, in the sports and pay the bills. Um, I thought, wow, that'd be a great way to go. Well, that was it. Didn't work. 
just they they couldn't even get the kids and the families to show up so it i was like oh man so when you approached me and said hey we've got an idea i'm like you have no idea what you're asking you have no idea what you're getting into here kai so uh it was the perfect birth of a vision i had 13 years ago of what we could provide a service to our community a service to one of our greatest complaints is parking i mean we're a free event we're free parking most events don't you know charge for parking they charge for parking we don't um, and how do we lessen the impact in our community, lessen the impact of vehicles in that neighborhood on a Friday night? Um, if anybody's tried to drive there yet, it's a lot. Um, I'm sorry, but we're successful. <laughs> I like that. Um, I'm sorry, but ride your bike. Sorry, yeah. yeah. So we did. We started preaching, okay, drive your car, park it at Reno High School, but drive your car with your bike on the back. And then ride your bike into the park. Uh, we now have a consistent ability to provide a service that your bike will be watched by people who love bikes. <laughs> you know, so you, Kai, your organization, Trucking Meadows Bike Alliance, I mean, has been the greatest solution to a problem that we've had. And we're just so happy that we can now, with great confidence, go back to the community and say, ride your bike to the park. We're going to watch your bike, you know, and um, and that little bike valet has now grown in its size because the quantity of bikes that are coming in each week and, and the customers and our guests and our community are realizing, oh, I can ride my bike. Reno's beautiful. Friday night, it's, you know, 90 degrees. Get on your bike, ride down and, and bring your beach chair if you want or not, a blanket and, and sit and enjoy the park. Enjoy the food trucks. Enjoy your friends and family and know that your bike is safe. Um, so it accomplishes so much. I'm just so grateful and thankful to your organization and to this community for for making it happen. Excellent. We're talking to Steve Schroeder of uh, Food Truck Friday. Uh, what, what's your uh, like title there at Food Truck Friday, would you say? I am the mayor of Idlewild. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was given to me by a customer. What are you, the mayor? Um, no, I'm the owner of Food Truck Friday, the creator, the promoter, the marketer. I do the books. I do the janitorial. I make the coffee. All the things. Yeah, uh, you're listening to KWNK 97.7 FM, Bike Life Radio. We're talking to Steve Schroeder of Food Truck Friday. Uh, and there's a bike valet there that you can ride your bike to uh, Food Truck Friday, and then we'll watch it for free, and that's thanks to Food Truck Friday that's sponsoring it. Uh, one of the things that uh, we think about when we think about a bike valet and riding a bike is the environmental uh, benefits of it and the health benefits and things. And one of the things that... I'm not sure that a lot of people realize is that uh, your your customers are or the patrons of Food Truck Friday are environmentally conscious for the most part. Is that is that true? It is true, as well as the vendors. I mean, every one of us thinks, you know, what am I doing here, and how does this end up in a landfill, um, and how that process works. So yeah, everybody is very environmentally friendly. I mean, everybody at their house has some sort of a receptacle to, you know, in their best wishes, do something recyclable or reusable or. Uh, so yeah, everybody. And so when we're talking about reusable, recyclable, things of that sort, uh, there's a cost associated with that, right? So can you talk a little bit about uh, the idea of, of reusable cups or reusable containers or forks or whatever it happens to be and how that might save money for the vendors? Or how do you, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I have a lot of thoughts. Um, and again, like we were discussing earlier, um, you guys weren't able to hear that great discussion. I always have a Kai. Um, <laughs> very stimulating talk here at, uh, at Coffee Talk. Bike Life Radio. Bike Life Radio. Yes. Um, you know, coming from each of the perspectives of the discussion, um, the perspective of the consumer and the person we all live on this planet, and even the business owners are consumers too. Uh, what does it take to have the discussion of you know, recyclable, reusable? Um, you know, the great challenge comes from any type of legislation or rules that are created that mandate a, something new in the marketplace to a business. A business has to say, okay, well, now I'm being mandated, and this costs more than something I was able to do before. I'm now conflicted. I have to raise the price because in the restaurant and uh, food truck industry, beverage industry, I mean, you're talking margins of net profit of uh, anywhere between 5 and 12%. You know, we're, we're not rich out there. We're asset heavy, <laughs> owning multiple restaurants and so forth. But, you know, in terms of the big rich guy, we're not it. Um, so how do you take something that um, the consumer thinks, well, it's only a couple of cents. Okay, times thousands. Yeah. Um, business owner, okay, well, now I have incurred my, my monthly operation, my costs every time I do something. Um, do I pass it on to the customer? Okay, well, the barrier there is the customer's going to say, your, your costs are too high. Well, I've been mandated this cost, and I have to do this, even though I want to do it, but I can't recover that cost. So we have, it's about how that compromise of ideology takes place. Um, everybody is looking forward to something like that. Um, 
fast forward, this is, I mean, this is going back the 13 years I've been doing it. It's been going back longer in the restaurant industry. Hey, can I have a cup of ranch? Uh-huh. The business owner. The service says, hey, no problem. Here you go. Business owner's like, well, I just put 50 cents out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so uh, in those convenience ideologies and then you know, the performance ideologies, how do you really put this forward? So fast forward to like 2020 when everybody shut down. 2021, the little cup of ketchup, the little cup of ranch, the little cup of mustard, that, that little plastic thing that's about one ounce with a lid on it went up 150% because of the logistics supply chain and, and just COVID shut everything down. So now a restaurant's faced with, what do I do? I have a 150% increase on something that costs, you know, maybe 30 cents before. And now we're talking a lot. How do I pass it on to the consumer? And the consumer says, why is it so expensive to shop here or buy your food? Um, so it's, it's settled down a little bit, but you know, when costs go up, they don't come down, unfortunately. Um, and in particular, those plastics and, and so forth are tough. Even though they're recyclable, they still cost money. And then you add the other layer of, now we're talking reusable, recyclable, and uh, biodegradable. That's been a discussion in our area a long time. Why can't you serve this in something that's biodegradable? You know, you gave me styrofoam, but why can't it be, you know, like something I've seen on the internet or TikTok? Um, those Your customers cost- are asking that. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And the business owner's like, what do I do? We know they're out there. Um, we, you know, I'm the event promoter. I don't have a restaurant, but um, the restaurant owner's like, yeah, we know it's out there. But the problem is because of the materials to create it, it's so costly to buy it, to provide it to a customer. And then the customer's like, well, you should be doing this and it should be affordable because we're all making a better decision. Um, but it's, it's significantly costly because of production costs. We found some solutions in the marketplace. I've, I've reached out, looked out. I know the business owners have looked out. We haven't come to that compromise yet of being able to deliver something um, and I know part of the audience is like, whoa, how are you even having a discussion? Uh, it should be a solution. Um, it, it comes down to cost. And right now, those, those costs post-COVID, post-supply chain, logistics, materials, manufacturing, and employment costs have increased significantly. So, you know, when you look at one biodegradable uh, um, piece of service that you would put a, maybe a burger or fries into or a salad into, um, the cost has significantly increased in order to pass on to a customer or to absorb that customer. But we all see all sides of it. We all see. And, and it's trying to come to that solution. Is your sense that vendors would like to use reusable cups or cups that, that uh, the customer brings or, or no or don't know? Well, you open a great discussion with that question. Um, the discussion of the term reusable um, from a, a customer mindset, it actually isn't just the word reusable because we have other components we put into it. Um, I guess I could use biology as the greatest sense. Remember genus and species uh-huh. in biology class. And I hated that class. <laughs> Teacher was terrible. Um, genus and species. So when we talk the word reusable, it also comes from a place of environmentally reusable. It comes from a place of recyclable. And it comes from a place of refillable. And from a customer standpoint, it comes from a convenience um, from a business owner, refillable, reusable, and recyclable are three different things completely. Um, what is the cost? How do I do this? And what rules apply? Uh, up to this point, I know that discussion, it's a great discussion and we should be having it, but I want us all to begin the discussion coming at it from an understanding and a compromise that it's not a simple discussion. It's not a simple answer. Um, it is, we're going to have to start using three terms and separate them. And I, I think that's something I would probably ask the city to really think about and understand from all sides that are coming from, from the customer, from the very, you know, very concerned customer, the concerned business owner, because we all care about our environment. Um, and we can't place blame and labels on somebody saying you don't Um, because we are trying everybody's trying to do their part Uh, we love this planet and I'd like to see the discussion be parsed into three species (laughs) under that genus of refillable reusable and recyclable because each one has its own adaptability its own compromise and its own solutions Uh, they cannot they interchange but they have to be separated in order to create what we call um, enforcement So if you're coming from the event world or the restaurant world, right now and up to this point, there, I think I'm finding out there might be a, uh, an interpretation change from the health department. We've all operated in the health department. Okay, you sit there at the bar and you get a drink or you get an iced tea at the restaurant. Hey, just use this cup. I know I just drank from it. Just go ahead and refill it. Some places, yeah, I can't refill it. 
I'm the customer of coming from, but it's easier. I'm, I'm, I'm helping you. You know, you're not having to spend time or effort, yeah. time to cost, wash yeah. to wash it yeah. or blah, blah, you know. But I can't put it under this tap and I can't refill it because it's a health issue. Yeah. You know, we need to keep cleanliness there. So there's got to be some interpretation of that reusable, refillable, recyclable uh, from a health standpoint of enforcement. Now, every restaurant, operation, bar, everybody's doing some sort of a food service, even the fast food restaurants. You know, what does that mean? Um, because there has been a health enforcement. Uh, and this is nothing against health department. There's, there's been an enforcement and there's an ideology. So, you know, what do you mean you don't use your cell phone? Well, I've been using it for 30 years this way. Well, okay, change. So uh, behavior has to have some changes and enforcement has to have changes. So in a bar, um, reusable. So I go to the health club and they have this wonderful dispenser that's a water dispenser. They used to be drinking fountains. Now there's a refillable water station for my hydro flask. It fit, my hydro flask fits. So I now use the word refillable, reusable in the same as environmentally sensitive. I brought my hydro flask to the bar. Uh -huh. Can I refill my hydro flask? So we have to come at it from a real understanding globally of what are all the components of refillable, reusable, and recyclable uh, in terms of this enforcement and use from a business standpoint and from the city standpoint of how this takes place, the health department, and from consumers to be open-minded to understand how all these pieces are happening. So if you bring a hydro flask up to a bar and say, hey, refill this, um, okay, I'm an event. We have a limitation from the city of Reno, and it's, it's a good limitation. We can't refill, we can't serve something more than 14 ounces at Food Truck Friday. Uh, we don't have extra large. We don't have 18, 24, and 32 ounces. Um, and it just comes from a place of public safety uh, that we are held liable to. And uh, so I bring my hydro flask, and it's 30 ounces. Do I fill that with a beer? <laughs> well, if you're going to give me a $10 tip, yeah, I'm going to. Okay, that's the problem. One of the problems. Okay, and then it's What's uh, the public safety aspect. Would you say uh, like a, a, Do you want to talk about that at all, or not really? You know, it's yeah. a tough one. It's we're all very conscious of public safety. Yeah. Um, okay, we have bars at Food Truck Friday. We serve beers. So there's bars all around town. It's two o'clock. Well, California time. Um, you know, we're, it's closing time. Do I keep serving you? Do you? How many did you have tonight? Did I cut you off? Did you go drive? And did you get drunk? And and did you hit somebody? That's where it comes from. Uh -huh. We back up from someone being irresponsible and hurting someone else as a result of alcohol consumption. Yeah. Um, so, you know, reusable, recyclable, refillable coming from a place of alcohol at bars. Yeah. Um, so the public safety is always, they come from that place and then they back up to the steps. Yeah, um, that's another good point. Like, uh, you know, I, I, the, the complexity of a, a refillable cup and somebody bringing their own uh, you know, bars I don't think are permitted to do that, you know, can't go in with your hydro flask and fill it up or whatever. So why would they allow it to happen at, uh, at Food Truck Friday? We're talking to Steve Schroeder of uh, Food Truck Friday uh, and uh, a bike valet is allowed there. And we're talking about reusable cups in the bike valet and, and uh, Food Truck Friday in general. Uh, you're listening to KWNK 97.7 FM. So uh, I, that's, it's really complex, uh, the, these refillable cups, huh? Well, good thing we allow for reusable bikes. Uh -huh. <laughs> you can drop off your bike, and then you can pick up the same bike and then reuse it. So we're all about reusability. That's where the confusion, I think, comes from, is that so many things, uh, people are used to reusing things in their home all the time, and they'd like to reuse things when they go outside their home, too, I guess. Uh, yeah, I mean, the invention of paper plates for the sake of convenience, but if you have a clay plate and you put it in the dishwasher, I mean, it's reusable. Yeah. <laughs> so... Uh, yeah, it's as an event, you know, right now the standards are obviously public safety and liability and consumer safety and also being conscious of consumer cost, uh, consumer expedience, consumer service. Uh, right now we can't pour more than 14 ounces in the, in the park. These are park rules that may not apply. These are city arena rules that I adhere to, so I can only come from a place, but I do understand globally because I'm in contact and constant conversation with so many business owners in this community, the unsung heroes of entrepreneurialism that are restaurant owners. I mean... Uh, everybody's everybody's all for the tech people that own multiple companies and the big guys, but um, you know there's guys that own 14, 15 restaurants here in town. That's that's a big deal. So, um, so you walk up to the bar right now. We have to give you we give you a plastic cup. It could be a it's most likely a recyclable cup. It has a 14 ounces. It has to be clear and it has to have a marking on it. So now let's back up. So RPD is at the event. And they're walking around. One, they want to see that you have a wristband on that you've been allowed to have alcohol. Um, because hey, we're the public. We'll 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 do anything, and we'll, there's gray, and there's rules, and there's not rules. And you know, I'm 14, and I want to, my uncle's going to give me a beer. So that's a concern. Um, 
And then the RPD is looking for the reu looking for a clear plastic cup with something in it. We cannot serve solo cups. You cannot be walking around our event with a solo cup because that now says you're not adhering to the rules of what we're providing within the parameters of the event. Yeah. Um, and it has to have maybe a sticker defi defining that it's something being given. Um, you could bring clear plastic cups to the park. Well, you really can't because now it has to have a sticker from one of the vendors that are on it so that the RPD can know if they come up to you, what are you drinking? Yeah. Um, so there's, yeah, so many sides that come to that cup um, and so many responsibilities and liabilities and, and public safety involved. So how do we now approach reusable, recyclable, refillable from all those standpoints of I'm at, the, I'm at a bar and I'm serving. Um, what does the city or the health department allow me to do? Um, what is the size? Um, and how do I know what that person is bringing back to me is something I serve because now I'm liable for it. Yeah. One of the things that we do on Bike Life Radio, you're listening to KWNK 97.7 FM. We're talking to Steve Schroeder of Food Truck Friday that offers a bike valet. Uh, so you ride your bike there and it's free uh, thanks to Food Truck Friday. One of the things that we do on Bike Life Radio is we tell a bike story. Uh, do you have a, a favorite bike story or one that sticks out in your mind? I know that you have some bikes, so I think you might have one. Any time throughout your life, a lot of people like to tell crash ones or, uh, you know, <laughs> I, I, it could be you oh, rode. Oh, yeah, the, like the yeah. time I crashed coming down the chutes off of uh, off the mountain over there. Okay. Yeah, that's and they're, they're so little, but by God, when I went through them, it was slow motion. They were so big, and I didn't do it right. So, oh, yeah. Um, uh, my, I mean, one of my favorites is uh, I was in a triathlon, and I picked up the 60-mile, and it was a half triathlon. It was a 60-mile ride. This was in Atascadero, California. I can't remember the name. A uh, little flower, flower. Uh, the actual event. Um, I was in shape. I was ready. I had my road bike, and I trained. And everybody said, "Hey, you got to remember, at mile 40, you're gonna bonk. Uh -huh. There's a hill, and and even the best of us, it's gonna get you." Oh no, I got it covered. I had glue. I had remember goo. Uh -huh, yeah. Okay, I had a goo, you know, <laughs> duct taped to my frame. And I remember I squirt it in your mouth. Oh yeah. At the right time. Okay, yeah. but if you can't breathe, you can't squirt the damn goo in your mouth because you can't even squirt it. You gotta, you know, squeeze it out. And you're trying to suck on it, and you're, and you're, oh my god, I'm dying, and you're breathing, and you're trying to, and, you're, and it hits you. Yeah, didn't everybody tell me this was gonna be a problem? And, and I just remember that moment of yeah, I should listen to other riders. Yeah. Um, got over the top and made it back, but uh, oh my gosh, that was a memorable moment of I can't breathe. This stuff is not going down fast enough. Please glucose get into my body so i can recover um it was a, it was quite the moment of oh my god this is real yeah and it was it was great I, I love riding bikes mountain biking i was in san luis obispo for 10 years and the uh, the amount of mountain biking around there is just tremendous because you can be in the valley five miles from the ocean and you ride up over a hill that's it's a grueling turn cutbacks and so forth you get to the top and oh my god you've got this amazing view of the ocean and and i think that was just the global, you know, enhancement of I'm on a bike, I'm outdoors. Oh my God, I've got this ocean in front of me, and oh my God, I'm outdoors. Yeah. And it's so beautiful, and that's just something I love about biking. Steve Schroeder of Food Truck Friday, uh, and you're listening to Bike Life Radio, KWNK 97.7 FM. Is there anything that you would like to add uh, about reusable cups or how uh, events can change or uh, the the events uh, committee is taking? comments now on policy changes so and you're just learning about that now so but I'm sure that you've had ideas in the past of how they could change or, or improve well you know for the sake of public safety and the growing events in our community and my event being when it was created it was new and it's just grown at an incredible rate um, we're just so thankful to our community for showing up and supporting us um, but in that growth comes, you know, okay, this year we had these issues, what do we do next year? So there's always a change in, in new rules and enforcement. And, uh, you know, some event promoters or, or businesses are, are very retaliatory or, or defiant. Um, you learn to abide and you learn to um, enforce. And I'm just so thankful in working with this city that, that we have a great group of people that are involved in coming up with these ideas and, and listening to the community and coming back with the word compromise in, in enforcement and in rules. And... Um, I've just we've come to a great place where okay you know how do we there, here's a problem yep I see all sides how do we work this out how do we you know make it happen here at my little event um, so it's it, I think it's a great thing I think what the question you're asking with this idea of reusability um, I think it is a great discussion and I think it does come with multiple components because when I said reu when the word reusability I'm thinking you know I just went to Rayleigh's and I bought these aluminum cups for camping they're reusable. Yeah. They're 14 ounces. Can I take that into Food Truck Friday and have them refill it? Now, 
they don't have to pay and burden the cost of a new cup. I'm helping them and it's reusable because I can take it with me out of the park and um, I can take it home and I can wash it and recycle it and it's refillable. So it accomplishes these things from the mindset of a consumer and I'm helping. Um, there's many functions of that in this place called events, in this place called a bar and a restaurant that um, we need to really come to a compromise of how that's going to happen. And I just ask everybody that in this process of determining what is the proper allowance and enforcement of this thing called reusable, which applies to recyclable and refillable, um, how that takes place. So um, let's all come to the table with great ideas and great compromise um, and understanding ultimately if, you know, however it works out that, you know, we're just going to uh, work it out and it, this is how it's going to be. And um, um, I love where it's coming from. I love the place that everybody in their heart cares about our community, cares about our environment. Um, cares about our landfills and cares about how we do things and um, I'm all for it and, and I think our pocketbook and our pocketbook um, yeah most of all so <laughs> I think it's great I think it's a great discussion and I'm, I'm interested to see how this everybody comes to the table and we can figure out how to move forward uh, the first steps are usually small steps you know in, in change um, as we work towards uh, additional compromise okay well this we, we did this but you know how's it gonna work next time maybe let's have some more change there's more change so there's an evolutionary process and um, you know as great ones always say it's about the journey <laughs> not about the destination <laughs> we'll get to the destination but let's all be a part of a great journey and, and let's figure out how we can do this Steve Schroeder food truck Friday there's bike valet there uh, ride your bike so park your, your car a little bit of ways and, and ride your bike the rest of the way thank you for being on bike life radio Steve <laughs> all right we'll talk to you soon thanks again this is KWNK 97.7 FM from the Reno Bike Project on Grove Street and NevadaBike.org. BikeWashoe.org, too. That's it for Bike Life Radio. We ride our bikes out into the world with a recorder, and we talk to people about their bikes and their lives. Now at a new time at 5.30 every Sunday. I'm Kai Plaskon. Right on.